I'm Scott Isle Miller. This is my vlog of life living in Latin America. Today I'm going to be answering a question or comment that was left on the vlog from just yesterday. We're going to be talking about what kind of fears we have as related to the rest of the world. We had just in the news from yesterday that there was a terrorist attack in Moscow. And of course, this is very scary and our, our uh, hearts go out to all the families and people who are affected by that terrible attack there at uh, the theater. Uh, but the question came up is, uh, of course, in certain parts of the world, Fears like this are very real. There are real attacks that go on, things that people have to be afraid of. How does that relate to our experience in Nicaragua? What do we fear? What does the day-to-day -day life feel like uh, in this regard? So that's a great question, and we're going to read the whole thing and get to that right after the bubble. All right, before we get to the main question for today, I'm gonna to read another one that just came in from Cassandra Tartur, uh, 9935. This literally just came in. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to cut out the music in the background. There's a lot of music playing and I can't get away from it in the hotel that I'm working from. But she says, my family and I want to go to Esteli to look at land and check out where we might want to buy land. My husband is originally from Nicaragua, but has lived in Costa Rica since he was 11. We were thinking about renting a car to have freedom to see little pueblos. Do you think this would be the best option? And yes, Cassandra, I think that most likely that would. So if you're really looking for land and you know your way around, you're comfortable driving and you have like all the basics down, you're good with that. Yes, you can take buses around. Yes, you can hire a driver. And in some circumstances, people know that I would recommend that. But for the most part, if you're going to be really exploring land, you need to be able to jump out of the car at a moment's notice, see something, just get out, check it out and have that freedom to go to any place, any time. Renting a car is probably going to be your best bet. There's nothing is going to be perfect, um, but driving around those small towns, that is pretty easy. You can park, you can walk, go back to your car, and that way you don't have a person that's dependent on you all the time. Now, of course, having a driver that can take you around and knows all the places, knows where to park and can deal with the car while you're looking is also valuable. So that's the other option. If you can find a good driver that you can hire full time and he comes with a car, she comes with a car, whatever, then that could be a good option as well. It really comes down to what deal you get on a rental, who you find to drive you around. Um, are you going to be doing it all day long? Is that like your only thing? You're just doing it a little bit. You, you kind of have to play with it. Personally, because I know people who are drivers, I would actually use a driver most of the time because the cost of a rental is so high, it's not worth dealing with um, and, and the driver will stop. You just have to be prepared to be like, oh, I wanna go here, I wanna go there. Um, and you want someone who can find their way around. So it, it, either way has benefits, but renting a car is the way that most people are going to go. But it's certainly, it's a very close thing, um, but that will work fine for you. Uh, and, and good luck in uh, hunting around the Pueblos. I moved over a little bit to get away from the loud music because it was pretty loud out there. It's a little bit, a little bit hard to talk. So uh, the main question for the day comes from Gigi Gabriella, and she says, "Great video with a lot of insight." And I swear I don't make, I don't choose these uh, comments just because they say things like that. But in this particular case, thank you again for doing such a great video and also for keeping the community strong. Breaking news came out that there was a terrorist attack in Russia, and it made me think about how. There are so many dangers that some countries have to worry about. For example, in the United States, we worry if we're going to be in a mass shooting when we go out because they happen in mostly unexpected places and times. We also have to worry about possible kidnappings of our children. Living in Nicaragua, do you or other people living in Nicaragua have that same fear? Is this something that you have to think about before you make plans or go out? Especially if you're an American and go there dressed nice, like is if you have money, do you need to be fearful of something bad happening? Are there shootouts, kidnappings, cartels, gags, drug problems? So. Great question and obviously very timely with what just happened in Russia and the things that the U.S. are facing. And of course, these are things that people think about all the time. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that uh, just in the middle of all that was said, we have to worry about kidnappings in the U.S. And this is important to note that that was um, fake news in the early 1980s. And it, the U.S. has never had, the U.S. has a lot of issues, but one of them is not kidnapping. Kidnapping has never been a thing in the United States. The idea that that was actually a worry was fake news that came out in the early 1980s. It was later rescinded and everyone knew like 
published that it was, had been fake and that it, the statistics were completely untrue and children are extremely safe, but the damage had been done. Once it was into the psyche, people kept repeating it and schools repeated it and government officials repeated it and parents were taught that you had to be really fearful of this. And the United States changed heavily from a place where children in the 1950s and 60s and 70s were free to go outside and play to the 1980s and later where they were uh, kept in homes and, and very protected and people helicoptered and adults felt that they had to watch them at all times as if the world is full of predators and the reality is it is not um, and and all throughout the rest of the world Europe and Latin America kids can play in the streets completely safely the, the the idea that people are just grabbing kids off the streets happens almost nowhere there are places in the world where it's dangerous but North America is not one of them at all it's actually incredibly safe in that regards so that is not something you have to worry about even in the US even though everyone talks about it no one has actual cases of it on any statistical level. If you actually look, every single time it happens in the United States, it makes national news. And that in a country of a third of a billion people, that it only makes the news once or twice a year, it's really a rare thing, like super rare. And when it happens, it's generally not something that you can protect against based on your culture. It's normally someone connected with the family. So neither in the US nor in Nicaragua is that particular thing something you have to worry about. But the other concerns are real. Places like the US and Russia, they do have fears of terrorist attacks. They are countries that play major roles militarily, financially, uh, in many different ways on the world stage. And this makes them big targets for terrorist groups, for uh, people looking for crazy people, for religious fanatics, for all kinds of things. So there are a lot of dangers that people face in the US and Russia. And there's also a prevalence of weapons and a culture of violence that you have to be aware of um, and obviously is affecting a lot of things. And uh, for though, even for those of us who don't live there actively anymore, we're still being affected by, ah, oh, people that our kids know had, you know, whole families that they were friends with wiped out by mass shootings in the last six months, right? Um, it's We've had so many connections. We've never been in a mass shooting, thankfully, but we have so many connections to people who have. It's absolutely crazy the amount that it, it comes into everyday life, that it affects, you know, everyone you know. Like, we have so many close family members who have had people they know or their friends have been involved and in some cases killed. Uh, and so it has, it really does uh, play into every time you go out and certainly every time we visit the United States, we're very fearful of that. Now, like if we go to someplace like Disney World, you don't have that fear. But if you go to the mall or the movie theater or something, and every time you talk to people, you know, their, their thoughts are, uh, well, I'm afraid to go to the mall because, you know, I'm not allowed to carry a gun and I have to have a gun because it's going to make you like, it's like people are fearful. Like it's a real tangible fear here in Nicaragua. Honestly, no, we don't have those fears. We've never had mass shootings like that. Like, could it happen? Of course, but has it ever happened? No, that's not, not something likely to happen. We don't have a, a high prevalence of guns. They're not widely available. And when they are, they're not those types of weapons typically. And so that's a, a very unlikely scenario to happen. People can't get them casually. Anyone who's getting them has gone through immense work to get a hold of one. You would not do it for, for some to make a statement, right? You would you would uh, be, be investing. It would be, take so long of saving up and so hard to get. And you'd be so easily tracked that you really don't see it being used in that way. Uh, so that alone changes a lot of things. And because Nicaragua is a very small country, a very poor country, and its only place in the world stage is kind of providing a uh, role model and commentary for other countries, it's very much a background country. There's essentially no one who's out there being super passionate about, well, we gotta, we gotta you know, do something nasty to Nicaragua to make a point. It, it, because it's not sending military anywhere, because anywhere, it's not sending military supplies anywhere, because it's not playing a military role, it's not playing a religious role in the world stage. Like there's, there's just no one impacted in such a way that they would uh, consider those kinds of actions with any likelihood. So we don't worry about those things. So all of those kinds of things, those really are um, unfortunate things that tend to affect very large and very influential countries, and especially those that are involved militarily. Uh, outside of their own borders. And so uh, that that alone provides us a, a great degree of, a degree of safety. And Nicaragua in general, like the United States, is a relatively safe country. Now, in the last few years, we were safe like Canada. Nicaragua's gotten a little bit more dangerous. The U.S. has gotten a little bit more safe. And now Nicaragua and the U.S. are, are roughly equivalent in 2023 for, for violent crime. Uh, but in general, Nicaragua is a very safe place, both from a everyday on the streets kind of 
uh, safety, but also from a general statistics type of safety. Now, for comparing, as you mentioned, some of the things you were concerned about at the very end of that email, that, that post, if you're looking at some of our neighboring countries, especially Honduras and Guatemala, they have very high crime rates that are connected to cartels and drug trafficking and gang violence and those kinds of things. And of course, El Salvador was in the past, but it's cleaned that up. And so they're doing very well right at this particular moment. Honduras and, and Guatemala have major drug trafficking problems and this leads to the gangs or vice versa uh, and that leads to the cartels and so they like Mexico have a lot of that kind of stuff that they have to deal with and so this is important for two reasons one that brings a lot of the crime and the things that people tend to fear in Central or Latin America are related to that uh, and it's also important to note that when you're in places like Honduras and Guatemala while they have some of the most wildly reckless uh, violent crime numbers in the world. They have gotten better, but they're still pretty high. As a tourist, you're generally not affected by those things because you're not gonna go to the places where that's likely to happen and you're not involved in the activities that cause that to happen. So even in those countries, those really high crime rates normally do not affect you as a tourist or even as an expat. Uh, even if you were to move full-time to those countries and become very involved in the culture in the local community, the chances that those uh, particular risks are going to apply to you remain extremely low. There are countries where living there, you'd be just in the same risk pool as everyone else. But if you are in a place like Guatemala, then uh, you are very unlikely to fall into that risk pool. So as a tourist, while it looks statistically like a Guatemala or a Honduras may be quite a bit more risky than a Nicaragua or a US, the reality is they're only marginally more risky. They are more risky, but your risk as a tourist remains very, very low. And I would not be worried in any way whatsoever about going to those countries and even going pretty broadly across those countries. I've traveled across quite a bit in both of them, especially Guatemala, and absolutely no worries. Now, of course, if you're in Guatemala City and there are rough barrios and, and things like that, the zonas, uh, yeah, you're gonna wanna stay away from those, but there's also not tourist attractions. There aren't reasons that you're going into them. This doesn't have housing that you're looking for. It doesn't have activities that you're looking for. If you're going out to a restaurant, you're going to a museum, you're going to the zoo, you're going to uh, famous sites, you wanna go see whatever, you're gonna be in very safe zones. I spent some time talking to someone who moved to Guatemala City maybe 30 years ago as a Brit expat, and uh, he said, no, it's the parts of the city that he actually spends time in are extremely safe, like very much like safe parts of the US, safe parts of Nicaragua. And common sense says, don't go into these dangerous areas. You know when you're doing it, when you live there, it's super obvious and people who get into trouble in those areas are really doing foolish things that they knew were foolish. Now, it's still unfortunate that they have that crime and you do have to worry about being foolish. And in places like Nicaragua, you can be pretty foolish without running into danger. So that is a, a difference. But when we're talking about real life and things that will affect you as a real person, the chances that those things will affect you in those places is very, very low. Now, that said, Nicaragua does not have that type of crime. We do not have the cartels. We do not have the gangs. We do not have the drug trafficking. Nicaragua is an extremely anti-drug country. They have done um, outrageous amounts of controls to make sure that they do not become like their neighboring countries, especially Honduras, El Salvador in the past, and Guatemala. Uh, they had a lot of fear of that. They watched it happen there, and they were very cautious uh, about keeping that out, and they've done a great job at that. There are drug transport checkpoints all throughout the country. Don't be surprised if you get stopped by the police at random. It does not mean you did anything. It does not imply you did anything. You should never, ever connect being stopped by the police when you're driving with maybe I did something wrong. That's not how it works. The stops are random. So I say that because so many people, even after I explain that, they will write to me and say, I was stopped arbitrarily as if that's a negative, but that's how the system is supposed to work. It's not the United States where you have to do something wrong to be stopped. In Nicaragua, you are stopped at random so they can check you. That's how it works. And they will often look in your trunk, see what you're hauling, and they're just looking for drugs. If you're just, or guns, <laughs> if you're just doing normal things, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. It is a standard procedure and it doesn't imply anything. They're not singling you out. They stop every other car, every 10th car, whatever. And I've had it many, many times. They're very friendly. They open up your trunk, they look around. Oh, okay, you're just a normal tourist. 
on your way, no problem at all. They also check your license registration, those kinds of things. They do that all the time. So Nicaragua has none of those fears either. So when we go out, like quite literally, we feel safer going out in the middle of the city, even late at night with our kids in Nicaragua than we do in the United States, um, which in, even in the United States, we don't really fear it that much. And our biggest fear is the mostly irrational fear of mass shootings. And we do start to avoid things like malls and concerts and stuff. I wouldn't go to those in the United States anymore, even though it's really not that big of a risk. It is a big enough one that there's no reason to have to go there. Uh, but every time that we hear of one of those, we do very much think to ourselves and we all say publicly, thank goodness we live in Nicaragua and those are types of fears we don't have to worry about. And every time we hear about something tragic happening in Honduras or Guatemala, Mexico, we say the same thing. Thank goodness we're in one of these countries where we get the benefits of the culture and the food and the people and all this wonderful lifestyle that we get in Latin America and Central America but we don't have these risks that so many of the countries in this region have ended up with. Uh, and so, no, to answer your question, one of the reasons to choose Nicaragua is because those fears shouldn't exist for you. Is there risk? Of course there is, but it would be similar to going to a decent part of Canada and being like, oh, is it risky? Well, something could happen, of course. Something can always happen. There's never zero risk. That is not an option. But as far as having a relatively safe lifestyle where you can feel comfortable going out, going to restaurants, walking around cities, being out at night, being out in the day, worrying about your kids playing outside, Nicaragua specifically addresses those things and makes it a place where for those reasons, you would want to choose it to end up in a better situation than almost anywhere else. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you for sending that in, Gigi. And uh, if you guys want to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, like, subscribe, post on social media, tell someone you know about the show, twist their arm and get them to watch. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And we're going to pop up on the screen just for a few seconds here, four more episodes that we've made. If you want to help convince the algorithm to show more of this show, just click on one of those and help us out.